A very good day. Welcome to Sopan in Poland, the Hippodrome Sopot to be precise, uh, for the latest round in the FAI Jumping Nations Cup Series, the Western League here in Poland, and ready for what looks on paper to be an enthralling competition uh, taking place here in Sopot. It's a dank and rather miserable day after a, a torrential thunderstorm overnight. We had a glorious day here yesterday, but the weather has changed but it's warm, that's the main thing, bit of a breeze, but here are the current standings as we approach this third round of this year's uh, series of seven. Switzerland off to a flying start, they're not competing here, and France, who are, have also got off to a terrific start. Great Britain not here, Belgium are here, and uh, look to have a strong team. Italy, Ireland again with a strong team are here, as are Germany and Austria, but it's Switzerland who lead the way after a flying start in La Boule and St. Garland. So that's the current standings. All will change, no doubt, later on today over the, <coughs> over the next couple of hours or so and so with this competition. And here is the start list for today's uh, Nations Cup competition. Ireland will go off first. They look to have a strong team on paper. Home team Poland, um, well, they'll be roared on by the crowd, but on the face of it, are up against it today. France, again, with an intriguing and experienced team here. Brazil, part of the lineup. They again, have got a strong looking team. Germany, well, interesting. Daniel Deusser, their star man. Belgium, of course, high expectations with their team. An experienced day for Austria, may struggle. And the Netherlands, of course, got the fourth leg of the series next week. Back home in the Netherlands, make up a team that looks to uh, starting their campaign this year here in Sopot. Well, here is the start list. It will be Paul O'Shea who will head the way for Ireland in the first group of riders. And uh, William Grave will be the last of the eight riders in the first round. Shane Sweetnam uh, then uh, kicking off and uh, Simon de Lest uh, also in action. And here are uh, the current qualifying standards, uh, standings just to confirm as uh, where, where we are. And as we look at the start list for round one, Paul O'Shea will be the first to go on uh, Scaris Glen's Machu Picchu and uh, could set the tone. Simon de Lest, well, he will be the lead off right there for, <coughs> for the French. And some of the other names there, Roger Yves Bost for France uh, and uh, Jan Spray for Germany. This in the first. And then looking Bertram Allen for Ireland and Peter Devos for Belgium. The uh, Longy ranked fifth in the world. So big chance for him on a part. Uh, so that is the lineup of the riders taking part here. The teams and they're going to face an intriguing course set by Simon Talent, the Polish course designer. First time at five star level. He set a very interesting course on Friday for the Longines Grand Prix here, which meant time was pretty significant. 75 seconds is the uh, time allowed here with 15 efforts. And it's a technical but fast track. And I think that's going to be the intri intriguing part about this course. And here is that course. Start with relatively straightforward fence, but then throughout, you've got to keep the uh, speed up. And I think that's going to be the defining aspect of this particular Nations Cup. There's three, and then four is a big spread. That could catch them out. And it's uh, 160 the spread, then round to five again. 190 the spread next door to the hospitality tent here. Then they turn around for the double with uh, just one stride between. 155 is the height of the double. Turn back round to seven, another big spread. 170, 155, so that again could be a test to the water in the middle of the arena. So charge down to that. And then this is a very high upright coming at nine on the turn as well. And talking to one or two of the chef to keep suggest this could be one to catch out after the uh, water. Back onto uh, 10, and then down the side in front of the spectators for the combination. Two strides, then one stride. So again, high 
middle part, a big spread to begin that combination, and then to the final at the Longines upright at 160 to finish. So looking at that, you get the sense that it will be a no let up track. That is the consensus and what Simon Tarrant wants to uh, set up for the crowd here and for the competitors on this overcast day, 64 degrees. It's warm enough. There is a breeze, as you can see, the trees are, they are a fluttering. So uh, breezy day last night at around about midnight, there was uh, the mother of all storms in Sopot, but uh, it was forecast. And as I said, we had a lovely day here yesterday and indeed on Friday for the Grand Prix. So uh, the crowd settling in on this Sunday morning here in Sopot to enjoy what should be a fascinating competition. Paul O'Shea will be that first rider to come in for Ireland and uh, their campaign sees they've already had one counting leg that was in Lapool. This being their second and they're also coming back out to the top of the competition and the world. The best teams are coming in the third and And just confirming, seven teams from the Western League, the top seven teams at the end of the series will be off the, on their way to Barcelona. So all to play for, plenty at stake in this year. And again, this is a big chance for maybe some of the other nations just to get some experience of exactly what it, you need to compete at this highest level. But the scene is set for the first rider to come in, and that will be in a couple of minutes' time. And coffee's at the ready, and we will begin with Paul O'Shea. Other first riders, Simon de Lefs, he's the lead-off rider for France. Daniel Deusser, brilliant winning the Grand Prix here on Friday with his horse, Yasmin Vidi Bishop. They completely dominated that competition. They were so impressive. Uh, Niels Brunsils will also be in the uh, first group of riders on his good horse, Deluxe Van TNL. And Willem Greve will be the lead-off rider for the Dutch. That's the first eight who will be going here in Sopot on the north part of Poland on the uh, Baltic Sea, a real holiday town. It was uh, this was teeming last night. Uh, lots of people from all around Europe here enjoying this town and also the good weather. So lots to enjoy here and uh, it's a great part of the country. And this event is going from strength to strength as uh, the Polish people get right behind it and they've really shown commitment. There's been a lot of work on the infrastructure here, new stabling, which is pleasing all the teams who have come here. So lots to commend the organizers here about the way they're enhancing this particular event and bringing it on and the crowds subsequently coming in to enjoy it. And this is what they've come to see. We had, as I say, a really good Grand Prix on Friday with Daniel Deusser dominating. There were some other good performances along the way, but he just produced two brilliantly effortless masterclass of rounds that completely dominated the field, winning the Grand Prix by well over a second. And it wasn't an easy track. Uh, yet he made it look like a gentle afternoon stroll. So clearly from a German perspective, much will be expected of him as the other members of the team. Well, not saying that not going to be able to go well, but on the face of it, Daniel Deusser is going to probably set the tone for the Germans who didn't get off to the best start in the uh, competition when they were competing first up in the uh, lap ball when they finished sixth and they will be competing not only here in Sopot as counting and then they're off to uh, Geister next week and then Hickstead as the fourth for the German team but of course they've got so much strength in depth that uh, whatever team they put out it's always going to be competitive. So two rounds of course is the uh, format and there will be a 20-minute gap after the first round. 
and then if teams are tied there will be a jump off and so and then we'll also be bringing you the prize giving so we can now get ready because it's nation's cup time here in poland and our first rider is coming in to the arena and it is Paul O'Shea coming in, an experienced Irish rider, based at Vert, like so many of his compatriots over in Florida, the 51st ranked rider in the world, and he's on a horse, he's also very experienced, and at Scara Glen's Machu Picchu, and what heights are they going to scale here? this afternoon. So here we go then. The first rider in the Sopot Nations Cup is on his way. It is Paul O'Shea riding Scara Glen's Machu Picchu and already been part of an Irish team this year in La Boule, where they had one fence down in the opening and in the second round, as the Irish team eventually finished fourth. And this horse has gone double clear in Nations Cup before, in Falsterbo last year. And time is the, the essence here. What is is it going to be one that can be easily got so far, this is good. Coming out of the water, galloping to it, and no problems there. Now to nine, this upright has to check into it, and that is the one that got to be in control coming out of the water. And then double backing on himself to ten. Now to the combination, the Longines combination. Pops this very nice. This is a very good start for the Irish. Rodrigo Pacea thinks he's got a strong team here. Can he go clear? What about the time? He's actually made it look very easy indeed. So time doesn't look to be too much of a problem, but an excellent start for the Irish and a broad smile on Paul O'Shea's face as they get off to a flying start here with a clear round for Paul. And as I say, he went double clear in Falsterbo last year and had one fence down in La Boule in both rounds earlier this year, but he'll be mighty pleased with that start for the Irish, as indeed Rodrigo Pessoa will be too. So good start for the Irish, who looked, as I say, to have a strong team with Shane Sweetnam, Peter Maloney, making his Nations Cup debut in the Western League here for Ireland, the 28-year-old, and then Bertram Allen, who is the youngest member of the team, but feel, you feel like he's been around for ages, will be the uh, last to go. Now, coming in for the home team here, Poland. It is the 44-year-old Krzysztof Ludwiczak riding Nordwind and was competing in the Three Star Nations Cup earlier this year when they finished second to the Irish in the jump off and clear in the first round of that competition. But this is, of course, a, a step up. And they went pretty well in the uh, Grand Prix on Friday. And so far, a nice solid start from the Polish rider to the double. Again, makes that look quite easy. Now, seven big spread 170 that spread flicks that through rather trailing a hind leg and that's down now to the water and makes a complete hash of that so this round having begun so promisingly promising is just unraveling a bit and those two mistakes in successive the rhythm was lost at seven and then into the water just waiting for confirmation rattling through the combination, but we'll just wait on confirmation of his score, saying that he didn't go in the water, but it looked as like if he did. So it's saying four at the moment, but we'll wait for confirmation of that. It's saying four penalties. So, so four, it's saying four. 
those just hind legs egg going through and then just rattling it through. So a little frustrating. Maybe didn't have a, a fault at the water, but it looked a little bit ungainly, but all the same, four it is. Now to France. It is Simon de Lest. Simon de Lest beginning the French quest for the Nations Cup title here in Poland. Uccello de Will is the horse. Jumped in a similar style competition in Rome recently and was uh, had the fence down in the first round. Jumps that big spread, number four, well enough. 160 is the spread on that. And five's got a 190 spread through the double. Easy. Just having to keep the horse up to his work. Grafting away. Now to the water. Plenty of air over that. Calmly to this upright. Makes it look easy. Now, still clear, but just looking hard work to keep this horse going, but responding. And now to the final, that's had a fence down. Checking where had the fence down. So, four. But time again is not a problem. This was quite a grafting round. Looking up at the clock as Simon there, but uh, so four for Simon de Lest for France. Now, next into the arena, rider number four. And it is the first of the Brazilian riders. And it is the 29-year-old Philippe Amaral. Germanico, 12-year-old man. Unfortunately, we had to end just the result of Christian Lubitsen because there was a fault also at the water jump. It means eight penalties. So just confirming, actually, just having it confirmed, there was, uh, it wasn't my eyes deceiving me. It is eight faults for Christoph Lutrichak. So, so Philippe Amaral begins Brazilian, the Brazil quest for the title here. On Germanico. This is the big spread, 190. Now to the double, turning out very calmly. Round to seven. Oh, flicks down the front rail. Just didn't quite get the height to the water now. And check out for this line. He doesn't quite get the height coming over the uh, final fence. And so, in the end, puffing cheeks out for Philippe Amaral with eight is the score in round one. Of course, just to confirm, one score is discarded. Yeah, just to look at how it didn't quite go as intended in the beginning, but I'm 
and short. And just the one clear round so far for the Irish. Paul O'Shea setting the tone for his team. Now, coming in to the arena to begin for Germany, Daniel Deusser about to start his round on this wonderfully talented 10-year-old mayor, Yasmin V. Bishop. They were quite brilliant on Friday in winning the Longines Grand Prix in both rounds, calmly ridden, and made it look like a different competition to the rest of the field. So clearly from a German perspective, high expectation that he will jump clear on this mare. Seems to float across the ground, this horse. What an exciting prospect for Daniel. Oh, that, oh, gives that one a bit of a rattle, but stays intact now to the water. Now to the upright, no problems. Takes that turn shorter than some to 10. to the final fence and look at the time it's just in the way this horse moves across the ground and what a brilliant clear round for Germany and Daniel Deusser the perfect start for the Germans here in Poland with that round from Daniel Deusser another clear round for him here in Sopot with this very talented grey mare and just even having a little bit of a check up at the water still made it look easy. Good start for the Germans. Two clear rounds so far. One for Ireland, one for Germany. Let's continue with the team of Belgium with Chef So an intriguing and fascinating start to the nation's cup here in Poland. And coming in now is Niels Brunsiels on Deluxe Van TNL. And has already been part of a Belgian Nations Cup team this year, of course, the champions from last year. And he jumped double clear on a different horse in Nabul. This horse was, he was competing in the World Cup finals and finished an excellent six. So again, from a Belgian perspective, they'll be hoping to get off to a good start. They've got a team that blends uh, experience and talent with uh, also up-and-coming talent so um, and combinations oh, that part is down just flicked it on its way down so not what the Belgian was wanting it would be a frustrating mistake for Neil having had that big spread down to the treble. Two strides, one strides. Now to the final fence, which he's catching a few out, but not near. Oh, but he's had has one fence down. So it's four for the Belgian. So two clear from the six riders that have already gone. There is the uh, course designer in the background there. That is... Uh, Simon Tarrant. Oh, I think he'll be quite happy with what he's seen so far because no obvious let up, and you've just got to be accurate, but you've also got to keep the speed up. And that's what he wanted to design as he's designing for the first time at five star level. Having come through the ranks, he will be designing the Pony Championships courses that take place here later in the year. Also, design the show jumping phase of the cross-country European Championships that were in Stragon back in 2017. But now, the first rider from Austria, and it is Matthias Reich, and unfortunately, he's had the first fence down. 
on board Color Bleu, a 10 year old stallion. And a little on paper for this 39 year old, this horse looks a bit of a step up, but can regroup after having that first fence down. And he's appearing to do so. Double, that's not catching many out. Now round to the seven. She has caught a couple out. Over the water, now down to nine. Calmly done. Group well at the moment. Let's can we keep it up through the fix the top of that one and a little rattle on the final part, but all good so far, staying together. And that will be just unfortunately uh, one time fault to go with that early mistake. So it's five for Matthias Reich. So a good effort, and particularly after making such a mistake at the first, but regrouped and kept it together, although the speed was the the problem and there is the uh, first has just got it all wrong and came down very steep on it so the uh, back legs had nowhere to go well two then clear those two Ireland and Germany almost certainly expected but I wonder whether Belgium will feel rather wanted a bit more and then Austria, well, not a bad start for Matthias Reich. A bit of pressure on some of the less experienced riders coming for Austria. Well, an intriguing Dutch team has been put together by Rob Ehrens here, um, with not maybe the uh, star names, but all horses look as if they could certainly go well. They've got the Nations League next week, but first up, it's Willem Grieve on Sipira S, his 12-year-old mare. And Willem, 36-year-old, they had just one time fault in the Grand Prix, which meant it was a two-round competition where 25% of the field, it was 13 clears they had, so he just was outside the time, but jumped an excellent round on board this horse. They were also in a, a Nations Cup stuff format competition in Rome recently. Where they picked up time faults there as well. So maybe not the quickest horse, but an accurate horse nonetheless. So hence the reason why Rob probably has put this horse first up. It's the water. Really significant amount of air, made it look easy. Mm. Rob Ahrens did think nine would catch a few riders out, and I don't think anyone's had it down so far. The last of the first line of riders coming down the line for the combination and the time looks as if this is going to be a, a good start for the Dutch team because the time is not an issue and accuracy is the name of the game for Sibira S and also this time the time and a big fist pump from Willem he looks very pumped after that and what a start for the Dutch they get off to again an excellent start in this, their first competition of the year, counting competition of the year. And they are one of three to go clear then in the opening salvo of the Sopot Nations Cup round, leg three of seven. And we now go to the second line of riders. So, Paul O'Shea went clear for Ireland, first to go on Skara Glen's Machu Picchu. And now, so Shane Sweetnam is the next rider. And an Irish show jumping, enjoying such a, a strong renaissance recently. And Shane Sweetnam's been at the heart of it. The 38-year-old rider number two for Ireland on Alejandro, a 10-year-old horse that he's been riding since the start of the year. Was part of the Irish team that finished fourth, riding a different horse that day. 
and uh, it's Indra van der Oude Heijs of who he was riding. They had one time for and clear in the second round. So Alejandro, though, was eighth recently in a Hom Hamburg Grand Prix. Just had a pipe opener on Thursday and um, in the speed class and did well enough. But obviously this is the uh, the big start and Arnold hoping to make it two from two. And it's over the water easily enough. And kept it together. Let's say the most elegant, but all good now. So far, so good then for rider number two from Ireland and Shane Sweetenham. Coming now to the final part, time irrelevant, and jumps that. And the Irish are flying. Two from two. Shane Sweetenham, along with Paul O'Shea. Good start. The Ireland team looks strong on paper, and they've done that so far. Still to come, Peter Maloney making his Nations Cup debut in the Western League. And Bertram Allen, so some talent to come. So the Irish with Rodrigo Pessoa at the helm of the team. Well, they'll be very pleased. There's confirmation on our screen of where we are at. So, well, what a start from the Irish. Two from two. Well, the second rider from Poland now entering the arena. And it is. The 22-year-old Andres Oplotek is the rider coming in for Poland, and he is riding a 10-year-old Grey Gelding, Stakatan. And can he put together a good round here and delight the Sopot crowd here? He's begun well enough. First rider, Christoph Lutfisak, he had eight. He had problems at the uh, water and the fence prior to that, seven and eight. Oh, well, so far so good. Maybe a big cheer if he does go clear. But can he keep it together? Nicely over that one now to the water. enough looking good very good run on a horse that had a few problems on Friday in the Grand Prix now crowd holding its breath now. groans as the middle part of the combination didn't get the height there two strides but just got a little close oh, disappointing and time was fine but that middle part of the combination still an excellent round very tidy but it means that uh, Andres Oblitek on um, two, the second confirmation at the moment, it's going to be Christoph Lutvicek's score that is the discard. So all the same, good, a good round and the confidence boosting round. But sure, the crowd, you could down by the uh, crowd that's by the trouble. Well, they were holding their breath and hoping, but it wasn't to be. So, the second French rider makes his way into this arena here in Sopot, and it is Olivier Robert on board Tempo de Papa, a 12-year-old chestnut gelding. And Simon de Lest had four faults early on in his first to go for the French, who have got off to an excellent start in the competition. do here what can Olivia Robert the again very experienced rider and looking very accurate at the moment oh, oh. you could just hear him going whoa whoa because he was freewheeling into that but got it all under control
clear in, in got into the jump off on Friday. And they're clear here in round one of the Nations Cup. So, France now with their first clear. So, Ireland have two, and Simon Delès with four faults in his round, but Olivier Robert, and look at the talent still to come from the French perspective, Roger Yves Bost on Sangre de Coty, and Alexis Deroubet with his excellent horse, Timon Doré. So, the French have given themselves a real boost there with a clear round. So, four clears so far. Next up, it is the Brazilian rider, and it is Luis Felipe de Azevedo Fio, and he's riding Hermes van der Vrombosterhove, and the 44-year-old rider number two for Brazil. First rider, Felipe Amaral, had eight faults. They jumped clear in the uh, Grand Prix, but were quite slow, so picked up time faults. Going to the double. See, not, that's it, the quickest horse. But so far, accurate. Water. Easy now checking to this fence going down the arena. No one having any problems there. Not quite as difficult as it perhaps seemed at first looking at first. So. Second rider for Brazil. 75 seconds, as I say, not the quickest of horses, and time penalty faults are coming now. So accurate, but slow, but all the same, not a bad effort at all. It was uh, cautious, and they get one time fault for Louis Philippe de Azevedo Fio and uh, Philippe Amaral with eight. So not a bad score, though, but it looks as if need to be going clear with the Irish setting the marker here. And we're on now to rider number two from Germany. The man with a very good pedigree, given who his father is, Lars Nieberg. But it's Gerrit Nieberg who is coming into the arena for Germany. And he's riding Contagio. And uh, this 15-year-old grey stallion for Germany, Daniel Deusser, already clear. They did jump in Rome, where they had four in the first and 12 in the second round. Went all right on Friday here. On fence, but a few time penalties, but... Nearly Germany will be hoping to match the Irish's start here. Double not causing any issues. Very economical over that big spread. The water. so far rattles it but no problems time is going to be close can get inside the time no not quite but can't quite match the Irish but still uh, it's not two from two Jumped clear, but just picking up one time fault there was uh, Gerrit Nieberg. So the Irish getting off to the perfect start so far. The Netherlands have also had one clear run so far, but their rider still to come in the second line of riders. 
And chance now for our next Belgian rider. Wearing for Belgian. And the 34-year-old Gudrun Petit is the rider. She's on her way. She is riding Seacoast Valde Madre Clooney, an 11-year-old stallion. And took over the ride at the start of the year. It was originally with Jos Lasnik, this horse, and Penelope Lebro had him for a period last year before Goodwin took over the ride. And she's begun well. First rider was uh, Niels Brunsiels. He had one fence down. forward to competing here in this nation's cup and so far so good this is a very good run we're getting another clear what about the time going to be close well should be all right just a beautifully judged run and look how pleased the good run looks as well because she judged that as well as you could, because it's another clear round. And this time, Gudrun gives Belgium, who have been so strong in recent years, and um, what a start for her here. And uh, on Seacoast, Valde Madre Clooney for Belgium. And she will be very pleased with that. Now, next up, it's from Austria. And it is the 19-year-old Anna Markel, the youngest rider here in the Nations Cup, riding, I think, the oldest horse here, Cascaro. And this horse did go in St. Gallen, but it was quite a struggle. Let's hope she can improve here and has got off to a nice start through the first four Not a learning curve is definitely a look for bringing on a bit of youth here in the Austrian ranks Manor is going well Unfortunately, though, not enough impulsion towards the water and uh, gave it, so you could see the splosh, didn't clear it at all. Disappointing. Jumping everything else very accurately. Nicely through that. It's going to be some time faults by the looks of things. Oh, and unfortunately, flicking that last fence down. And so it's nine for Anna. Just lost a bit of confidence almost after that water. Never got the flowing as it had early part of the round. So nine it is. Matthias Reich with five. Those are the two Austrian scores so far. Well, rider, the final rider of line number two is into the arena. And it is the... Dutch rider, Bart Bless, um, Israel VD Denehoff, who's a horse who's, like Bart, knocked up some air miles, been in Mexico, Shanghai, and Hamburg recently, performing consistently well. Remember already, the Netherlands have a clear round in the bank. Willem Griev, their first rider on Cypriot, did go clear. So can Bart be two from two for the Netherlands. Ireland are two from two. That's a big arching FEI spread.
Yeah. Sir. Make a quick turn back on ten. Gives it a big smack, but no problem. And are the Dutch going to be two from two? Time is safely negotiated. So we have two teams with a 100% record so far. We have Ireland and the Netherlands with two riders clear, with Willem Grave and Bart Bless. This being the first competition for the Netherlands this year. Well, what a good start for them. They'll be on home soil next week, but nothing wrong with that. A calmly executed round of jumping from Bart Bless has put them in an excellent position, two from two, as we now have a short break following this, just to give the uh, arena a little bit of a uh, harrowing as they prepare the arena uh, after the first 16 riders have gone, and they're just the way the standings are at the moment. Be more significant after this next line, but Ireland, France, Germany, Belgium and Netherlands all sitting, all having had clear rounds, are sitting with no points. Brazil one, Poland four, Austria five. That's the way it looks at the moment. So uh, intriguing, fascinating, but this course, it's got to just be accurate. And you've also got to keep the momentum going. So uh, that's the first two lines completed. Good start to the competition then here in Sopot. We'll be back very shortly for the first of the next line of riders who will be the R Irish rider making his Western League Nations Cup debut for Ireland and that's Peter Maloney on Chianti's champion.
Well, we're getting ready now for the next rider to come in. Back here in Sopot. The arena has been given a quick rolling and harrowing. And we get ready for the third line of riders in round one of the Nations Cup here in Poland. It's a breezy but warmish morning here. And uh, after a glorious sunny day yesterday, it was definitely shorts and T-shirts. Not so today. A more spring-like feel to proceedings here in the northern part of Poland. But we've seen an excellent start to the competition with clear rounds from Ireland, France, Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. And it's the reason after two rounds, but two teams have two clears so far, Ireland and the Netherlands. And there's confirmation of just breezy. Occasionally there's the odd gust of wind. It's been rattling the commentary position here. Running across the arena, the riders and for the horses. Conditions no problem at all. Thankfully, last night we did have a really torrential downpour from about 10.30 onwards last night for a couple of hours. A thunderstorm as well, but all is well. And no problems here. There's the scene out looking out over the uh, Baltic. Not that far from the coast here. This seaside town, popular for visitors all over the world. Well, it may be a bit cooler, but it's not starting, stopping a few hardy souls having a good ice cream. Must admit, I recommend the passion fruit ice cream here. Absolutely delicious it was yesterday. But I digress. Państwo już się 
Well, here we go for the start of the third line of riders. And the rider who has entered the arena, hoping to make it three from three for Ireland so far. Big chance for Peter Maloney, based in the UK at Newmarket, the headquarters of British Racing, part of the Team Harmony set up. Peter Maloney is, is riding Chianti's champion, champion and did compete for Ireland in Rome, but not part of the Nations Cup the series. And this is, this is his first time representing his country in the Nations Cup Western League. So big chance for Chianti, who did jump clear in Rome at the end of the Piazza de Siena, but now Peter Maloney begins the third line of riders for Ireland. So far, a perfect start for Rodrigo Pessoa's team with Paul O'Shea and Shane Sweetnam going clear. And can Peter Maloney add to that? They will throw down a marker to the other seven teams. Steady as you go at the moment for Peter. I have a fear as they come now to the uh, final fence. It's going to be close, oh, and he's also just not getting high enough to it. But the time was fine, it was close, but just didn't get enough impulsion into that final fence. So the 100% record for Ireland has ended there, but still two clears from three. So it's a really good start, and with Bertram Allen to come, Ireland have begun strongly here in Sopot. Not a bad effort from Peter Maloney. He just didn't quite get enough momentum going into that final fence. Well, next into the arena here in Sopot. And talented young Polish rider. And it is Jan Bobic. Jan Bobic into the arena for Poland. Riding Chaco Amikor. Went pretty well in the Grand Prix. Just failed to go clear to the frustration of the crowd here. Stands well off that fence. Number two. No riders so far. Christoph Lutwicek had eight and uh, Andres Oplotek four. I would really love to see a clear route here. And it's so far so good. Going to seven, it's big spread. And 70, 155 high now, galloping to the water. Has to check here, whoop, 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 brakes on. It gets the brakes on in time. for Andreas Oplatek. Rattles it, but stays intact. Time's going to be of no consequence. Can he jump this final fence? Yes, he can. Oh, delight for the home crowd here as Jan Bobic 
gives Poland their first clear round in the Nations Cup here in Sopot. Just what the doctor ordered from a Polish perspective, because Andres Oplatek and four, and now Jan Bobic with a clear round. And you can hear what it meant to the crowd here. Delighted to see the home man, talented young rider, produce a clear round. And quite naturally, he looks pleased enough with his efforts. Good effort from Jan Bobic. And just missed out on the, uh, in the Grand Prix in terms of getting into the jump off. But there was a, a very confident round. Well, here comes the Olympic champion, part of the uh, team for France in Rio. Japan on his mind is the veteran French rider. Would dearly love to find his way on the plane to Tokyo. And he's on this 13-year-old mare here. And that is Sangria de Cotti. A vastly experienced rider. And can he become the second French rider to go to Olivier Robert? Oh, he's not going to be as... Not many people have had anything done there, but he just... The sloppily he just got it wrong at the fourth fence. It's 160 spread, but the pull down. So for France, who've got off to a good start in the competition. Plenty of hang time over the water. What you having a Fight the horse's head here and up towards ten. Oh, another fence down. And just horse not being kind. Regroups through the treble. And now to the final fence. So eight it is for Roger Eve Boss. So the French sit on a score of four now. So four it is that's the best they can hope for at the halfway stage just getting that particular thread fence wrong so it is rider number four of the third line into the arena and it's a Brazilian rider Brazil sitting so far with an eight and a one score Philippe Amaral with eight, and then Louis Philippe de Azeleda Fio. Cautious, but secure round, but a time for. Next up is Karina Johan Peter, riding a 16 year old Bay Gelding, Casper. I think one of the two 16 year olds competing here. And this is an experienced horse. In terms of CV, finished 29th in the Grand Prix here on Friday. 35-year-old rider. And she becomes the first Brazilian to go clear. Done. She has a chance. Comes to the final fence. Close to it, but Teverly gets over. But unfortunately, she has picked up one time penalty. So the second Brazilian rider to pick up a time penalty, but means they're on two. They're giving themselves a chance here <coughs> with two good rounds of jumping. Philippe Guetta, yeah, chef to keep now, took over the job at the beginning of the year. So, next up is 
from Germany. Two previous riders. Nadu has had a fence down, although Gerrit Nightberg had a time fault on Catagio. So what can Jorna Spray do? And uh, riding Stacky's jumper, this 13-year-old stallion. And Daniel Deusser first to go was clear in wonderful style. And Germany, can Jorna Spray make it a second clear route? Pops the double effortlessly. I just gave that too much of a clob up, so it's a fence down at seven. And safely home inside the time, but it is a full full round for Jorna Spray. So there, Germany score now after two riders, if we discard Jorna Spray scored, is one with Gerrit Nyberg picking up that time fall. So not a bad start from Germany, who finished sixth in La Boule. Not the, probably the start they were wanting. They will be lining up in Geisterden next week. And Hickstead is their counting scores. So, is he looking for an improvement on that performance? Now, what about from Belgium? It's uh, a horse that looks very promising for Yves van der Hasselt, the 40-year-old Belgian rider. Riding Jeunesse, who is a 10 year old mare. And they did line up in that event in Rome where they had 13 faults in the first round and then just a time fault in the second round. And the Belgian riders so far, Niels Brunsils with four, and Gudrun Petit, much to her delight, going clear on Seacoast. Val de Maldre, Clooney. But unfortunately, it's not going to be clear for Van der Hassel. Thanks, Dan. Seven is catching one or two out, but although giving it a rattle, the pole stayed intact. Quick time too, but one fence down for Eve van der Hasselt. So after three, the Belgian score is four at the moment. With Gudrun Petit with a clear round, and both Niels Brunsils and Eve van der Hasselt having a fence down. And uh, still to go though for the Belgians. The final rider will be Peter Devos and a part. So. Plenty of talent to come from a Belgian perspective and expectation. Well, rider number seven in this third group is from Austria, who had more of trouble with their two riders so far, but another young <coughs> Austrian rider, just 22 years of age, it's Marianne Schindele, and she is riding acoustic solo du Balubay. 13-year-old gelding, 
and uh, basically both are sort of coming up through the grades, horse and rider. It'll be a good effort if they go clear here. Let's hope she can keep, from her perspective, this good start to the round going. Double. Seven, a slight bogey fence here. Not for her. I was wondering how close that was to the water. I haven't seen a red flag, but unfortunately, free wheeled into nine. And one of, I think maybe the first person to have that down just lost a bit of control coming off the back of the water. Looks as if she has put a foot in the water because, and now there's part of the treble set, just having begun well, just got a bit scrappy, a little bit of an experience from both horse and rider. So it's a 12 fault round for Marianne Schindler. And so, from leaves the Austrians on a score of 14 at present with a five and a nine score. Always looked as if they could be finding it quite tough work here, the Austrians, as we look at her going through the treble. And there was the middle part, just never got the height needed. Perhaps just uh, for a horse coming through the grade, suddenly finding these much larger obstacles. That height is 155, that middle part of the combination. And there's confirmation of the Austrian standings as we move now to the final Dutch rider. 28-year-old. And it is... He was also Doran Kuypers, and he is on Charlie, who has put in some good performances at Grand Prix level and uh, indoor in Olympia last year, the uh, show just before Christmas. Finished fourth in the Grand Prix there at the end of the show. So clearly a horse with some talent here and will Darren Kuypers become clear round number three for the Dutch. Already clear, Willem Greve and Bart Bless for the men in orange. Successfully at the moment. Rattle, but stays up. Could be three from three from the Dutch, and the time is fine. So, what a good start for the Netherlands in this, their first counting competition of the year. So, three from three, and how good is that? That's a very pleasing scorecard at the moment for the Netherlands. Willem Grave, Bart Bless, Doran Kuypers, all clear. And whatever, they will be on naught going in on into the next round. So a really strong start, and that was an excellent round of jumping. Safely inside the time two for the 28-year-old. There's confirmation of the team standings after line three with Ireland. Although their third rider had one time fault, ne Netherlands with a perfect record in pole position, as it were, going in to this final round of first round jumpers. And Ireland and Bertram Allen. Can't believe that it just he's just 24 years of age. Feels like he's been around for, forever. Of course, associated with the brilliant Molly Malone. He's got a good horse here, 
because he's got this right, Harley Vigi Bishop. So the final Irish rider in this first round of the Nations Cup here in Sopot is Bertram Allen on Harley Vidi Bishop. Two clears so far for Ireland and one with uh, had one fence down. That was Peter Maloney. So can Bertram Allen make it three from three? No, he can't because fence four is down. So with Netherlands with three clears, they will be leading at the halfway stage, whatever the outcome later on. This horse, who was part of the Belgium winning team in Barcelona for Nicola Philippartz last year, Bertrand just sort of getting used to riding this horse. Olivier El Grey. Fence forward down, the off spread there. Now coming down to the combination, just checking into it. That's very well. And then the final fence stays intact, no problem at all. Time is a good, a quick one, but it's four faults. So, in terms of their score at the halfway stage, they will be on four. And uh, so, but right in a, an excellent position there, just came down a little steeply. Maybe stood off a little too far from that fence. So, with that big spread of 160 in the early part of the run, it is a, a course that requires accuracy and a little bit of speed. So, still, good start for the Irish. Now, Jan Bobic gave the home crowd plenty to cheer about. Last rider for Poland. But now, their final rider, beginning for Poland, is Wojciech Wojciechnik. And he's on Nakord Maloney, a 10-year-old. And so far, they've had an eight, a four, and a zero. And uh, another clear would put them in a very healthy position at the halfway stage. It was part of a team that was second in the Three Star Nations Cup early in the year, and they lost out in the jump off to Ireland. believe it may be possible. So, not happening there. But still, it's been good response after a disappointing first rider with eight faults, but two on four. So, still, very good effort from the Polish team, which on paper does look to be a little bit... Uh, less convincing or as, uh, as some of the other teams but all the same they've got off to a good start there so they finish at the halfway stage on eight one clear and two with four faults so not a bad start from the Polish perspective and uh, not a clear round but uh, not quite to be for Poland well now we turn to France and their final rider and this is an exciting combination and it's part of Alexis Derube begins for France on Timon Dour. He jumped clear in the Grand Prix on Friday but just had a time fault. They were first to go in that. They were part of the La Boule winning team in the Nations Cup earlier this year. They finished ninth individually at WEG, so 
degree of expectation if they can make it uh, a second clear round for France. Olivier Robert, the man with the clear round for France so far. Strong team on paper have France. Simon de Lesse, Roger Yves but they both had a fence down. going to be an issue jumps it this is such a good combination they proved it again here as they go clear clear round number two for France France will be on a score of four at the halfway stage with Roger Yves Bos score the discard score but uh, they will be on four that's the same mark as Ireland this is bubbling up nicely the Netherlands with three clear rounds will be leading at the halfway stage whatever their final rider does and that is Kevin Jochems he'll be last to go so uh, a good start from the uh, French with their second clear round. And so far we've had uh, 10 clear rounds. We've had clear rounds, but with time faults, but 10 clear rounds so far. And now another vastly experienced rider for Brazil. It is Yuri Mansur Gerios, and he is riding Carlson. And Carlson is an 11 year old gelding. And so far, the three previous Brazilian riders, 8, 1, and 1, in terms of their scores. Beautiful jumping from the Second and third rider, but there's a mistake there. As that fence is down. Another fence down as well. So it looks as if Brazil will be on 10 at the halfway stage. The two riders so far with eight. The best score they can hope for. Yes, he has no more fences down, but it is an eight. So Brazil with two riders with two fences down, but two with two time faults. So that means they are on ten at the halfway stage. So, looking at the halfway stage score so far, we've got Ireland on four of completed teams so far. Then we have Poland on eight and France on four. And the Netherlands will be on zero at the halfway stage, so they will be leading. But it's just a question of what the teams ganging in up behind the uh, Netherlands to put pressure on them in the second round. Obviously, the Netherlands having the slight advantage, they are the final team, so they'll know exactly what they've got to do at all stages. But they're going well at the moment, but I'm sure from Germany, our next rider, Patrick Stuhlmeier on Barico de Temple, and this 10-year-old stallion will have things to say about it and they've already had one clear round and that was Daniel Deusser because if he goes clear they'll be on just one and that will really make sure they've got a little bit of pressure on the Dutch team get it Nyberg had one time fault in his round Daniel Deusser was brilliant first up horses is stepping up the grades but is certainly proving one to look out for and exciting prospect just as I say 10 years of age and still clear
just lost momentum going into that, sort of hung down, never quite had enough getting into that. So, it's four faults for Patrick Stuhlmeier. So the German score at the halfway stage is five, with two with four faults. Daniel Deusser had zero. Brilliant on Yasmin Bibi Bishop. Contagio and Gerrit Nyberg with one. And Lorna Spray and Patrick Stuhlmeier both having a fence down here. We can see she has lost forward momentum coming down that from that fence number 10 so next up rank number five in the world and for Belgium who are competing in their second event of the Today year, is lined up in Labo, where the team was second, the defending Belgium champion. So here goes Peter Devos on a part. Such a talented horse, and uh, have high expectations of being another clear round for the team. Gudrun Petit with a good clear, but Niels Prunsils and Yves van der Hassel both had a fence down. So We'll be looking for this clear run. Be clear round number two for Belgium. Yes, it is. And quick, too. A very assured round of jumping there from Peter Devos on his classy horse apart. And that means the Belgian team are now on four. And the teams on four at the halfway stage are Ireland, France, and Belgium. Germany have five. And it's 10 8 for Poland and 10 for Brazil. And two more teams to complete their first line of riders. And it's the Austrians who struggled so far here today, uh, with Matthias Reich, the best of their trio to go so far with five faults. But this is a young horse for Roland Engelbrecht. And it is the horse Mavisto's core Winnie. So, did compete in the St. Garland's Nation Cup, retired in the first round and came back with a. 10 fourth second round so again a horse learning his trade can they improve on that record in St. Garland and if he does go clear they'll be on 14 they'll finish They're propping up the leaderboard at the halfway stage whatever Give a bit of a confidence boost to the team going into the second round. Looks like we've got four in the water. Flag has gone up. So disappointing there. experience from this horse and actually three are down in the end and time faults so uh, not what but it's all about experience and learning for a vista is called Winnie just again that was the saw Marion Schindler have a similar sort of round for the Austrians and that's why they're on a score of 26 the discount score is run and Engelbrecht so the 12 9 and 5 scores counting so for Austria 
pretty tough opening round in this Nations Cup here in Sopot. They've got young horses, young combination, young riders and young horses. Always a difficult mix to try and get it right. Well, the Dutch have got it right so far, very effectively. Whatever Kevin does here, he knows his team will be leading at the halfway stage. Three from three. The 24-year-old Kevin Jochems. Costello is the horse that he is riding, this 12-year-old. Stallion. Long rider. And they're third in the Grand Prix here on Friday. He's had this horse since November last year. Kevin Jochems, the final Dutch rider. Can he make it four from four in terms of clear rounds? The three previous riders of William Greve, Bart Bless and Donna Kuypers were impeccable. Just to really confirm their authority in the first part of the competition here. Well, will they go clear? Remember, this is their first competition of the year. And they'll be competing on home soil next week. Gaisteren. And Kevin is going well so far. Like that, safely over the water. Make loop round to ten. That's down, so it's not going to be four clear rounds for the Dutch, but they don't need to worry about that because they are sitting on the top of the leaderboard. Kevin Joachim's just having the middle part of that combination down. There's confirmation of the Dutch scores at the end of the first round of this Sopper leg of the Nations League. Just see it again, how what happened. Just didn't quite get the elevation, so the hind legs wrapping that pole down. But all the same, a great start for the Dutch. And there are the standings at the halfway stage. It's Netherlands out in front. Ireland, France, Belgium on four, the chasing pack. Germany on five, Poland on eight, Brazil on 10, and Austria on 26. But it's the Netherlands. Excellent start. But all to play for with Ireland, France, Belgium, and Germany. He sends very much in the mix if the Netherlands can't maintain this very high standard that they have set. So, the course is being readied. There will be a break now, but we'll be back in time for the second round with Ireland Paul O'Shea beginning that as they look to continue with their fine start. But a really intriguing competition bubbling up here in Sopot with the Netherlands leading three clear rounds and then the chasing pack all putting in some good performances with those clear rounds it's Ireland France and Belgium on four and Germany on five join us for the second round in around about 20 minutes time. Well, here we go now for round two of the FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Poland. The Longines FEI Nations Cup competition here. And our first rider is getting ready. And it is from Austria. And it's Matthias Reich, who had five. He was the best of the Austra Austrian riders in the first round. He's riding Couleur Bleu. This 10 year old stallion. And uh, like so many of the Austrians, probably just stepping up in terms of uh, quality. And. On their way. Let's 
see. Can he improve? Well, no, just hit that third. And not again, the perfect start. Not the height necessary. Hearing the French team will be down just to three as so then Simon de Lest has withdrawn. It looked quite hard work for his horse, uh, Uccello de Will. But so the French now down to just three riders. So, not an improvement on his first round. A time fault as well. So that's going to be issued this time round, but uh, a few more mistakes along the way. So it's a 12 start for Austria. This looked like it was going to be a difficult day for the team, and it is proving to be that. So, uh, 12 is the opening salvo in this. The Second round for the Austrians. Yeah, just never get the necessary height at the end. Next, next up, Brazil. In the mix here this week. And it's Philippe Amaral who is next to go. Philippe Amaral and Germanico T is the horse that he is riding. And they were 18th in the Grand Prix here on Sat on Friday at four faults. And in the opening round here, they had a couple of fences down. Forward. Gallops into that fence now coming to the water. Clears it well. Now I've got to just check before this upright. So far, this is better than round number one. Now just four more jumping efforts to go. This is a vast improvement, whatever it's going to be a better score than the first time round. And it's a clear round, so Brazil with a big improvement there from Philippe Amaral. Following on from eight faults in the opening round, he has the first of the clear rounds in this second round. Very convincing performance, he'll be disappointed with how it began. And for Brazil, they're on a score of 10 at the moment. He'd be pretty pleased with that. Philippe Amaral, the young Brazilian rider. Now, so, Austria, difficult day at the office for them. For Poland, I think they can be reasonably satisfied with the way they've begun their Nations Cup on home soil. Of course, not in the Western League, but here as host nation. Two riders had four faults. But uh, their first rider is Christoph Ludwig on Nordwind. Had a couple of fences down in the opening round. See if he, like Philippe Amaral, can produce a, a better round. In his case, going clear. And has been part of the, the Nations Cup team and took on, just missed out to the Irish. That's it. Three Star Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
this isn't much better. Learned from the first round clearly. Hoping to become the second Polish rider to jump clear. Keeping an eye on the time. Rattles it. Now, can he do that? What about the time? But he goes clear. Is he going to pick up time? He didn't pick up a time penalty, but still. The two riders who had eight faults in the first round have jumped clear, although, disappointingly for Christoph, he has picked up a time fault. But all the same, this is a really solid performance on home soil by the Polish team. They'll be pleased with the way it's gone. Let's hope from their perspective they can keep it going because with three, the next three riders going, I never know where that, what that could do to their prospects of, uh, of a decent finish here. Well, rider number four in this first round of riders. Here in Poland, on a grey, blustery afternoon now, coming into the arena, for Germany. Starting this second round on five points, it's Daniel Deusser. Brilliantly clear earlier. And winner of the Longines Grand Prix here on Friday on this horse, Jasmine Vidi Bishop. They were wonderfully convincing winners on Friday. This horse has been jumping impeccably here. Under Daniel, the Longines world rank number four rider, the highest rank rider here this week. And his class has shone through. With Germany, though, on five. So needing a good start here. And not looking at the moment if you're causing any problems. This horse just eats up the ground so effortlessly and economically. You suddenly think, how come they're so quick? say she so far hasn't looked like hitting a fence and is Daniel Deusser going to be the first double clear of the day indeed he is and he's safely inside the time he has been on fire this week and has given the Germans the perfect start so the jumping definitely has uh, improved in the second round. We've had just uh, one rider with a f some fences down, but the others have all gone clear, although time faults uh, for uh, uh, Christoph Ludwig. So two clear rounds so far in this second round, and Daniel Deusser, well, it had to be, you had to say that uh, it looked pretty odds on that he would go uh, clear and, and jump a double clear. So well done to Daniel Deusser. Now, rider number five. Getting ready. Paul O'Shea bidding to become the second rider to jump double clear. After Daniel Deusser just a few moments ago, Paul O'Shea on Scourig Glen's Machu Picchu, this 12-year-old gelding, but Ireland off to a great start, one of two clear rounds for the Irish in this Sopot Longines Nation Cup. And can they continue here? And the Irish team looks a strong one on paper, and they've begun well, but they're one of three teams on four points at the halfway stage. Experienced rider based in America. They jumped in the pool where they had uh, a fence down in both rounds. They did jump double clear in Falstavo last year. You could hear Paul having to work quite hard to check into that upright. One out to ten. Some high-class jumping going on at the moment. And 
Coming to the final fence, and Skarag Glenn's Machu Picchu is... And Paul O'Shea, they are the second combination to jump double clear here in Sopot. Daniel Doyser and now Paul O'Shea. But a good start for Ireland as they bid to win this Nations Cup leg here in Sopot. And Paul O'Shea can looked as if his horse was in good form coming here and has proved that. As I say, it's a strong-looking Irish team and they've begun this second round in a very good in a very good manner so the heat is on now as i mentioned simon de left has withdrawn so uccello de will is not taking part so the french are down to just three riders olivia robert roger eve bost and alexis derube so it's now to belgium and they are on four so Niels Brinsiels and Deluxe Van T and L with the Dutch on a team score of four at the halfway stage. And he was one of two riders to have a fence down. The other two, Gudrun Petit and Peter Devos, they went clear. So Niels, vastly experienced and talented rider, will be hoping to do what a number of other riders have done already and improve on their first round scores. They jump double clear in La Boule. In a different horse. This horse was sixth in the World Cup finals. Had a bit of a break, but now gearing up again for the outdoor season. Deluxe Van TNL, the horse. Niels, the defending Nations Cup champions. He was part, well, part of it. such a successful resurgence of the team. Hangs over that one, but stays clear. So, I'll tell you what, the jumping really has sharpened up in this second round. Coming to the final fence, just had to slide check into it quick as well. So, clear rounds coming fast and furiously here in this second round. That is four clear rounds so far, and just the one with a time penalty. So, what a start for the Belgians, and they'll be again. A good, strong team here. They were second in La Boule. And they're going to be at uh, Hesterman and Hickstead after this. Still Gudrun Petit, he's van der Hassel and Peter Devos, their riders still to come. Well, another rider coming in who is hopeful of making it a double clear. So we've got Paul O'Shea and Daniel Doyser with double clears. But coming into the arena here in Sopot is Willem Grev, and he's riding Cypriot S, this 12-year-old mare, and the Dutch leading at the halfway stage on their way. Three clear runs they produced in the opening salvo here in Sopot, and can they produce another one, of course. Certainly amongst these riders proving a little easier to jump with the knowledge of what they did first time round. That's why it seems to be building up to a thrilling conclusion here in Poland. Fine margins in this nation's cup. Well, here we go. Is it clear? Oh no! Flicks that top plank down. So it looked so good, but just got. A little sloppy, so not quite the start the Dutch were looking for. But 
with that four just seeing there just brushing that final Longines fence down and the team standings the way it looks at the moment obviously chance for a discard score but Belgian Ireland Netherlands on four uh, with that score with Belgium with and Ireland both having clear rounds and Germany staying on five as a result of Daniel Deusser jumping clear. Right. Next up from Austria, the young 19-year-old Anna Markel, and she is riding Kaskaro. Had nine faults in the first round, this young horse. And it was tough going in St. Garland for the combination, but better scores this time round. And can she learn from what happened first time round here? I don't know if she had this fence down last time, but all good here. Now to the water. Oh dear, and she's been mugged off at the water there, just didn't want to know. Just stepped into it, had put in the water first time. Obviously, a horse not entirely comfortable jumping water, but still just the one mistake so far. And can she improve on her first round score? Time, though, looks like we're going to get some time. A time penalty, we are, so she's going to finish with five, but that's an improvement, and a mistake at the water, otherwise nothing wrong with that, so uh, a confidence-boosting round for Cascaro and Anna Markle, the 19-year-old. So for uh, Austria, they are going to be on a score of two more clear, it will be a final score of 31, but uh, clearly just about trying to get some improvement after the first round. And that's what Brazil will be hoping to continue because uh, they finished at 10 at the halfway stage and already have had their first clear inside the time in this second round. And we move now to the second rider from Brazil, Luis Felipe de Azveda Fio. He jumped clear but had time for this is not the quickest horse. But a very accurate horse is Hermes van der from Bosterhova, a 12-year-old chestnut gelding. Just not um, not the quickest, but still far going well here. Early on. Again, it's going to be a time penalty fault, but it is, again, as I say, not the quickest horse, but doesn't knock many down. So it is a one-point score, so big improvement from the Brazilian perspective. So they're sitting on a score at the moment of 10, if you discard the score of Luis Felipe de Azevedo Field. So a big improvement. So Brazil moving competitive in this second round. Now I think the Polish team would have been pretty pleased with their halfway effort, but saw them finish on a score of eight. And it was a good round from this young Polish rider, Andres Oplatek, who's on this 13-year-old uh, uh, Stakatan, or rather 10-year-old, I should say. 10-year-old Gray, so very much in the improvement and 
can they continue that? And they're on their way here. Andres Oplatek. One clear Polish rider so far. That was Jan Bobic, who was the third to go for the home team. Gets over the water. This stuff looks one time. Has it been done? The big rattle, yes, it has. So one fence down. Still, just like the first round, pops that, time is all fine. Looks back at that fence, sees the pole on the ground, puffs his cheek out in a little bit of frustration. But two good rounds, two rounds of all about confidence building. So, at the moment, the pole's on a score of nine, discarding that score. So, well done to Andres Oplatek who sits now, having had two full four rounds. And now we continue with our next from Germany. Ken had a good first round, but just got caught out by the time. So, next up. Into the arena here is Gerrit Neiberg on Contagia, this 15-year-old grey stallion. Germany with the team score of five at the halfway stage. Their first rider, Daniel Deusser, going clear. A double clear for the Longines world rank number four. It was a penalty time fault for Gerrit Neiberg, just the one. It was an excellent round of jumping, but caught out by the time. And can he now just make sure he goes clear? and is inside the time. Yeah. He's trying to keep the horse up to his mark. that down another one is just losing the back leg on that fence so four faults it is time is just I think gonna be all right no just gonna pick up no, it's a, just gonna pick up another time fault again not necessarily the quickest horse and just having fence 10 down that back pole. so at the moment Germany staying on their score of five at after that score for five from get it Neiberg. Let's continue with the team so of Now it's starting. And with Germany obviously thinking they may have a chance. Of, um, Brazil may be a little bit behind the uh, eight ball as the uh, Dutch certainly in pole position, but uh, now with uh, Ireland, France and Belgium, all with high expectations of trying to wrestle the lead from the Dutch. What can Shane Sweetnam do? So rider number two for Ireland in this second round of the Nations Cup here is Shane Sweetnam bidding to become Another rider to go double clear. His teammate Paul O'Shea has done that. Daniel Deusser, the other one for Germany. Shane Seaton riding this 10 year old grey gelding Alejandro. And Shane was part of a, the Nations Cup team in La Boule for Ireland that uh, finished fourth. And 
this horse has been jumping well recently since Shane took over the ride at the start of the year. Bold jump there. Likewise at the water. Breaks on now, coming to the upright at nine. I mean, just a battle hard, keeping the horse lined up for this one. That's caught a few out. No problems for Alejandro and Shane. To the trouble could he become rider the second Irish rider to go double clear comes now to the final fence pops that times safely inside so it is the Irish team looks strong on paper and they're delivering with two double clears fabulous so far from the Irish and they stay on their score of four well that is thrown down the gauntlet to the three remaining teams to go in this second round of riders. Both Paul O'Shea and Shane Sweetnam showing all their experience for Ireland. And now the first French rider to go in this second round following the withdrawal of Simon de Lest and Uccello de Will. And Olivia Robert is the rider. Next up for France is Olivier Robert on Tempo de Pampin, bidding to go double clear and become the fourth rider to do it. For France, Simon de Lest was withdrew after the first round, so all three French riders now need to produce excellent rounds no room for a discard here but Olivia Robert was excellent first up on this horse Tempo de Papa and also was fifth in the La Coruña indoor competition and was 13th having got through to the jump off on the second round of the competition in the Longis Grand Prix here on Friday afternoon stays clear coming to the water over that fence. Likewise, number 10 to the trouble. Making it look easy. Are we in of course for another double clear? We are because Olivia Robert has done it for France. So high class jumping here in Sopot. Another combination go double clear. Olivia Robert join Shane Sweeten and Paul O'Shea and Daniel Doyser with double clears in this third leg of the Nations Cup series and how good was he no hint of a mistake on this excellent tempo de Paban now so into the arena from Belgium. Excited to be part of the team. Gudrun Petit from Belgium. Clear first round on Seacoast Val de La Madre Clooney. A horse that she's only picked up recently. And clearly, this partnership is growing from strength to strength, judging by the way they jumped in the first round here. One of two Belgian riders to jump clear. Leaves them on a halfway score of four. Good and very excited to be part of the Belgian team. It's not an easy one to get into at the moment with so many high-class riders and combinations. Looking good so far. This is going to be a tough title to win by the looks of things. Again, no hint of a mistake coming in her route on this 11 year old. That was sweet lead. Wrong 
course, for another double clear. Yes, we are. I'll tell you what, these riders are making this course look seriously easy. And confident jumping. And what a performance from Gudrun Petit. That's two Belgian riders now clear, like the Irish. And that means that they are currently still on their score of four. Ireland and Belgium locked. And what about the Netherlands, who've had one rider so far, and he did have a fence down, but Bart Bless was one of three riders to go clear for the Dutch team. And here he comes in now. The you know, the pressure is starting to be turned up by this convincing performances from the other teams here. What a competition unfolding on this greyish afternoon. Bart Bless next for the Dutch. Looking to be another double clear. On Israel Vidi Danahov, an 11-year-old mare, who's shown a great deal of consistency of performance. Again, a nice, solid start. Is in the water. It is. Well, just didn't give it enough, and perhaps a slightly mugged off there. Well, that has now thrown the cat amongst the pigeons, as they say, because uh, that's a mistake at the water for Bart Bless means that both. Dutch riders now have picked up four, so that means now they are on a score of four. So we have three teams now on four at this halfway stage of the final round because we have the Netherlands, Belgium and Ireland on four penalty points. Fascinating. Look at the standings, and indeed, uh, France are on that mark as well. Four teams, Belgium, Ireland, France, and the Netherlands, all on four. So, uh, with Germany on five, there is all to play for now. Poland on nine, they can be pleased with their efforts, but it looks now it's a five-way battle at the halfway stage of this final round with these four teams on four points well you couldn't ask for a better climax to this competition and with some fabulous combinations still to go uh, this course will take some jumping precision jumping and galloping we'll take a short break uh, before as they prepare the arena for what should be a wonderful last part of competition here in Poland all to play for then in the Longines FEI Nations Cup leg here in Sopot.
Well, here we go now. It's the climax of the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Poland. The final two line of riders to go. It's set up perfectly with four teams on four points. And those four teams, Ireland, France, Belgium and the Netherlands, who've really produced some wonderful jumping in this arena here on a grey, slightly damp afternoon. But now we are set for the next rider to come in. And it is Marianne Schindele, who is representing Austria. It's been a tough day for the Austrians. She had 12 faults in the first round. Taz Reich and Anna Markel have had fences down. But Mariana Schandl and Acoustic Solo de Balobe begin their round, this 13-year-old gelding. Can they improve their score? And uh, it just got a little scrappy towards the end first time round. And she's fighting for the horse's head at the moment. And unfortunately, she's had that fence down. It is what it is. Can, and she's had another one down, so all proving quite difficult. And another. And just steps into the water. This is all a bit scrappy. required during this coming through the combination and does come through unscathed and manages to jump the last as well the time as well but unfortunately that is the uh, for her unfortunately the uh, worst round of the day so for the Austrians it really is proving tough uh, Gallum, Thomas Reich was eliminated I'm hearing so, uh, in terms of his score... Let's continue with the third rider of Team of Looking at that, but uh, the uh, Austrians are a bit part players in this particular Nations Cup. Now, for Brazil. Been a very good second round for the Brazilians so far. 10 at the halfway stage, it's Karina, Johan, Peter and Kasper, the 16-year-old gelding, going. They had just one time fault in the first round. So far, Philippe Amaral and Luis Philippe de Azevedo Fio have jumped clear, although the latter rider had one penalty to add. And again, for Karina, she had was just outside the time of 75 seconds here. Oh, brushes that through. It took an age to come down, but never quite got the height required. So, fence down. Not many have... I think that might be the first person to have the first part of the double down. And you can see her straining to keep the horse under control coming to that upright. Does it? So we'll move to a score of 11 at the moment. So apart from that first part of the double down, she's inside the time a little quicker, but it's a full fourth round for Karina Johan Peter of Brazil, their penultimate rider. And that's confirming their score at the moment. Gives them a score of 11 not counting as far as the she just brushed it and flicked it and it just rolled out now Poland now to go wind swirling around the arena here in Sopot so 
next to go. The third Polish rider is Jan Bobic on Czako Amikor, bidding to join an illustrious group of double clears. That includes Daniel Deusser, Paul Lachey, Shane Sweetnam, Olivier Robert, Niels Brunsiels and Gudrun Petit are all double clears at this stage. Jan Bobic, well, how he'd love to do that as well in front of his home crowd. And the two riders so far have Christoph Ludrizak. He vastly improved on his first round, just a score of one. Time faults. And Andrzej Obtetek matched his first round score of four. His 10-year-old stallion, and that seventh fence has caught him out. So, and he's now, well, that looks quite close to the water, and unfortunately, it's not going to be. And so, 12, hugely disappointing. It was a very good first round. gone a bit wrong here so four fences down time's fine so 16 it is for Jan Bobic and disappointing for the Polish fans here and there's confirmation of how the Polish team looks so far and Jan Bobic score currently the discard so that puts them on a score of 13 with one rider to go Now, now in the Germany still very much in the hunt, just a point behind the four leaders, Ireland, Belgium and the Netherlands and France. And so another clear here would we'll just keep the other teams honest because Jonas Spray is the rider now in the arena. For Germany, Jorna Spray, rider number three. One clear already in this second round, a score of five at the halfway stage. Daniel Deusser with that double clear. Jorna Spray had one fence down in the first round, and she better that. The 36 year old. Stays clear. The midway point. Quite close to the water, and she's picked up a mistake at the water. Flag is raised. And didn't quite didn't seem to be positive enough there. So for Germany, that's going to just let the air out of their balloon a little bit. And a second fence down. And the time. So at eight faults for Jorna Spray and Starkey's jumper, this 13-year-old. So at the moment, that puts the... German team on 10 with one rider to go. Confirmation there in front of you, the two scores. Five at the halfway stage, now five with Jorna Sprays being the discard score as we just look at her at the final fence. Just not quite the energy to clear that fence. So, for Ireland, it's been a perfect start to this second round. Indeed, it was to the first round with two clear rounds. Paul O'Shea and Shane Sweeten. So, rider number three for Ireland, one of four teams sharing the lead. Coming now, Peter Maloney, the young Irishman, first time representing his country in a Western League competition, based in Britain at Newmarket, part of Team Harmony, riding kit. Chianti's champion had just the one fence down. They jumped well in Rome in the 
in a Nations Cup style competition. And he make it three from three and whatever that would leave the Irish on their score of four. So really is a significant factor here. the water, the leg stays down, and this really is the business end of this particular competition, pressure mounting, so far Peter Maloney is equal to it, how's the time looking, just, oh. can he keep the horse going, yes he can, now to the final fence, time should be all right, comes to the final fence, pops that, and Ireland have begun with three clear rounds, so that means whatever, Ireland will finish on four points because Bertram Allen, the pressure's off now, he almost, well, he doesn't need to jump because they will finish on four points. So a wonderful effort from Peter Maloney. He made amends for having that one mistake down, no hint of a mistake now, so the pressure is definitely on the remaining three teams because they are in the same boat. Well, in terms of France, they've got all riders will count for them. They didn't have their first rider go here, Simon de Lest, so, but for Ireland, they can sit knowing their job is done. They will finish on a score of four points. That is fantastic. Paul O'Shea, Shane Sweetnam and Peter Maloney, the stars for Ireland. Will Roger Yves Boss now, next to go, full France, be the star, this experienced rider. And he's riding Sangria de Cotti. Had two fences down in the first round. And here he is on this 13-year-old mare, part of the Olympic gold medal winning team. But vastly experienced, and all his experience is going to have to come to the fore here. to the double. Stood off, but no problems. Now to the water. Well, really gave that some air. No problems, comes to nine. Right, here we go, this is getting interesting. Rusty working hard, stands off 10, now to the combination. Gets a bit close, but finds a way over, fiddling through the treble. Now to the final fence, and yes, he's clear. Big smile on Bosky's face there. He has to pull up. It's not always the prettiest rounds, but my goodness me, it's effective. So... France now two from two. They know that Alexis Derube on Timon Dur, if he goes clear, then they would be on the same mark and then would be in jump off time. And the same applies now to the next rider, third rider from Belgium. Let's continue with the third rider of the team of Belgium. In the first round, he had four penalties and he's starting with a gentleman. Because they can guarantee us a jump off if they go, if he goes clear here with Peter Devos still to come for Belgium there's significant moments in this competition next to go for Belgium riding Jeunesse is Yves van der Hassel this 10 year old mare they had one fence down in the first round two clears already for Belgium a clear here will mean that they finish on their same score at the halfway stage of four points the same as Ireland have already had those three clear rounds. And he's clear so far, Jeunesse, just 10 year old, but clearly an exciting prospect. And jumping in this second round has been of the highest standard. No problems there, coming to the water. Quite close, but don't see the flag going up. No looking, but stays down. Just checking it. I don't know whether it's going to... I think they're happy. It's still clear. Now, are we going to have a jump off? Can he stay clear? 
Still got Peter. Oh, it's down. Just brushed it. Didn't quite get high enough. So frustration for Belgium. But it's not a lost cause yet because Peter Devos is still to come for Belgium. But Ireland, well, with the, uh, the advantage, safely with three clears. But that mistake means that with one rider to go, Peter Devos knows exactly what he's got to do, and that is jump clear. And it is now fascinating. Just flick that one. Well, how tense is this? So, the final rider in the third line, the 28-year-old Dutchman, Doran Capers. Well, the pressure is certainly mounting. So, Doran Kuypers comes in, the third Dutch rider. He was one of three to go clear in the first round, but so far Willem Grave and Bart Bless for the Dutch have all blotted their copybook in this second round, having a fence down a piece, and that has opened the door, brought them back to the pack. Charlie, this 11-year-old. Now coming to the double. Basically, needs both these to go clear. Quite close, looking again anxiously, but the flag I think stays down. Oh, it's four, it's four, the flag's gone up. The judges took some time, but he's put a foot in the water, Doran Kuypers. That's not good news from a Dutch perspective, because now it's three with four, so they're going to finish on eight at, at best now. So the door is ajar now, it looks a battle between Belgium and indeed Ireland. With that foot in the water, he looks and realizes what happened. But for the fence judges there, took a long time to check it out. But it is now eight for the Netherlands, having begun with three clear rounds. They look to have every chance, but this second round, it hasn't gone right for them. So now it's a, the Ireland sitting there with four points, three clear rounds so far. And there is the situation. Belgium, Ireland and France still very much in the hunt here. But basically, with his final round, both Alexis Derube and indeed Peter Devos have to jump clear. That is the equation as we come to this final group of riders. And for Austria, it's Roland Engelbrecht. As I say, it's been a tough old day for the Austrian team. Uh, the horsepower not quite good enough today at this level, but it's a learning curve for the Austrians. And Roland on his way. He had a tough first round, 13. brushes that first pole and the second pole. So the tough day continues. And splashes into the water. Down comes to never got took off at all, so time falls as well. So, in the end, for Austria, 
Not an easy day. We had 26 bolts in the first run and add to that 46. So uh, really uh, not quite what they were looking for. So um, propping up the table, the Austrians. And now it's been a better second round performance from the Brazilians. Who remain, who are now on a score of 11, discarding Karina Johan Peter's score, who had one fence down because Philip Amaral and Luis Felipe de Azvedo Fio both went clear. And then we will see Germany go, uh, who now can't win here. And then it's Ireland. I don't know whether Bertram Allen will go. Doesn't need to because his job is, the team's job is done. So, the final Brazilian rider here in Sopot is Yuri Mansur Gurios riding the 11 year old Carlson. They're on a team score of 11. Been a good second round performance from the Brazilians with a clear and one time four. And uh, four from Karina Johan Peter leaves them currently on 11. Pride and a good finish here is what they'll be looking for. And this experienced rider will do his level best to make sure that that is the case. Now around. Heads to the water. Easily over it. Good second round performance from the Brazilians. Vastly improved and look at just as I say that got too close to that one. Catching a few out at uh, 10. And just looks coming to the final fence and negotiates that safely enough. But it's four. So they will finish on a score of 15, the Brazilians at the end. Confirmation of their scores. The uh, discard score is the slowest one in terms of time. You finish on the same score. So it is uh, Karina Johan Peter's time who is discarded. There's the mistake from Yuri. And uh, so for Poland, sitting on a score of 13. Brazil on 15. And it's Wojciech, Wojciechnik coming in. Nakord Maloney is the horse he's riding. Again, it's always a tough ask. The host nation coming in here. They don't necessarily have the experience at this highest level, but they've done all right. And just had the one fence down in the first round. Did Wojciech? And so far. Influential, but has had an impact in this second round. Oh, just got too close, so flicked down the front pole there. Over the water. Bogey fences here today. A couple of fences down. And it's eight for the final Polish rider. And that means they finish on a score of 21. So currently Austria at the top and bottom, then it's Poland. And 
can confirm that Bertram Allen won't be jumping and uh, doesn't need to um, because of the three clear rounds. So their job is done. And it means that uh, a lot of pressure on the French rider Alexis Derube on his good horse Timondor and Peter Devos in the part. Well, they have. Uh, rooting for two riders to deliver the goods suggests they might be more than capable that's why the Irish team I'm sure will be watching on an anxiously but Germany not their day today and if this is their second scoring competition they began it with a sixth place so again not pulling up any trees at the moment the German team in the Nations Cup but Patrick Stuhlmeier had four in the first round so far, Deusser with a double clear. That, I think, was almost a banker for the Germans and the way he's been jumping. Get it, Nyberg couldn't follow up his decent first round, had five, and Jonas Spray with eight. So Patrick Stuhlmeier just trying to keep the damage down and look for a decent finish here. Currently sitting on a score of 10 after three of the riders. With the discard score once again, you want to spray. And he remains clear through nine, turning round to ten. There's a chance here. Keep the concentration up and gets a little close almost, but no problem in the end. So another clear. Yeah. But we'll add some respectability to the scoreline in terms of end position. So they finish on a score of 10. There is news of that with Daniel Deusser, Gerrit Nyberg and Patrick Stulmer, the three counting scores in this second round. And a good performance from Varoka du Temple, the 10-year-old. Obviously, an exciting young horse for Germany. Now, as I mentioned, Bertram Allen sits this out for Ireland. As their job is done with Paul O'Shea, Shane Sweetnam and Peter Maloney proving the stars of the show from Ireland in this second round. But now, with... Only down to a three-man team in this second round because Simon de Lest pulled out. So no margin of error. The equation is simple for Alexis Derube to take us into a jump off on Timon Dor, his highly talented horse who needs to go clear. The final rider for France. He was clear in the first round. His compatriot Olivier Robert has produced a double clear. Roger Yves Boast followed up with a clear. So will he go clear as he now continues on his way? Jumps the fourth, no hint of a problem. Such a talented 12-year-old, this Gray. This combination has proved very successful. Ninth in the world in question games, jumping the double. No hint of drama there. Remaining composed. Slight flick, flick through there, but still no problem. Here's Prick coming to the water. Does that. Readjust quickly. This is looking good. And he keep it together. Stands off, but he's clear. Down to the treble note. Keeping it together. What a good round this is proving to be. Are we going to have a jump off coming to the final fence? Jumps it. Oh, it's down! Oh, my word! Everything had been going so well until then. Last fence drama. Alexis Derube knocks down that fence. And with all scores having to count for France, as Simon de Lest is out, it means they finish on a score of eight. It looked tantalizingly as if France were going to make it into a jump off, but they've had that final fence down. That seems so unexpected. What a surprise. So, real drama here in Sopot. For Alexis Derobe and Timon Dur. 
It looked as if they'd done all the hard work until that final fence. Wow. Well, time now with Belgium. Such a good run of form they've been on recently. And it comes down to this man with Ireland sitting in the clubhouse, as they say, with four points following three clear rounds. Peter Devos, the final rider from Belgium, knows the equation, has to go clear. They were at four at the halfway stage. He's on a part, this very fine 14-year-old gelding. And here's a man who's been in terrific form. What a rider to have to be able to pull out to try and go clear. Brilliant climax here. Can he avoid any hiccups along the way? No problems there. Coming now down to the water. Shouldn't have a problem here. And he doesn't. Out of nine. Again, makes it look easy. Checks into stands well off, but makes no big spread. See nothing. This looks good. Is he going to avoid last fence drama? Coming to it now, Peter Devos does avoid last fence drama. And means that he finishes with a clear round. And like Ireland, they have produced three clear rounds. So they're going to finish on four points. So we have Ireland and Belgium on that four-point mark. The Netherlands, the final rider to go. It means we, they, their performance in this second round has meant that they miss out as all the three previous riders all had four points. But Peter Devos proving a class apart to come through and ensure Belgium are into a jump off against Ireland. Wonderfully tense competition here in Sopot. Netherlands had got off to a flying start in this, their first appearance in this year's Western League. And they will be on Homestall and uh, Esther in next week. But Kevin Jochems is the final rider. Had one fence down first up, but they are on a score of eight so far with three, with four, having had three clears in the first round. But Ireland and Belgium with three clear rounds from their team. Ireland with the luxury of not having to jump Bertram Allen, but the Belgians proving equal. Now, just putting, restoring a little bit of pride from the Dutch perspective. Kevin would dearly love to be, make sure that he goes clear, meant that all four Dutch riders will have jumped clear. Not just having a look at the water, but I think she's happy enough with it. So the flag stays down. This fellow is the 12-year-old stallion that he's riding and unfortunately has brushed that back pole down. So not been a great second round for the Dutch. And so they will finish on a score of 12. So we'll confirm the one, two, three afterwards, but it looks as if it's uh, uh, going to be, well, Ireland and Belgium into a jump off. There's confirmation of the uh, final score for the Dutch. But uh, they will finish on 12. We now have a jump off featuring Ireland and Belgium and the team standings. Well, they'll make some adjustments to the course, but this has been absolutely gripping here in Sopot. A really dramatic conclusion with Peter Devos having to go clear, knew what he had to do. France missing out 
as Alexis Derube had that final fence down. So they finish on eight. The one, two, three, four, Belgium and Ireland into a jump off. And then France, Germany, and then it is uh, Netherlands, Brazil, Poland, and Austria really struggle today. But Belgium and Ireland into that jump off, having produced um, some thrilling competition, great consistency across the team. So they'll be getting the course ready for that jump off. We'll find out who is going to be representing each nation. Remember, Bertram Allen didn't jump for Ireland. My whether it will be him or will they go with one of the other combinations. They gives them the chance because obviously should on paper be a bit fresher. But who is going to go for the Belgians? In fact, I can probably tell you that Paul O'Shea is going for the Irish and Scaris Glint, Machu Picchu, and Peter Devos on a part is going to fly the Belgian flag as they go in search, in the Belgians' case, of successfully defending their title here in Sopot. They won 12 months ago. Peter Devos was right at the heart of that 12 months ago, and he's right in the mix again as being influential figure here. Who is going to go quickest? Join us for the jump off as they prepare the course. What a climax here in Sopot.
We're getting ready now as the uh, lead rider for Ireland comes in to begin this jump off between Ireland and Belgium. And the course, slight modifications, a couple of fences that weren't jumped in the first two rounds have been included. So, uh, but as galloping away, chances here, and it's going to be Paul O'Shea who is first in as the arena is ready. The Irish team watching from the side. So, seven obstacles, eight efforts, and we're getting ready. And this course designed by Simos Talent. I think you'll be very pleased. What a thrilling climax. And there is Paul O'Shea riding Scaras Glen's Machu Picchu. Double clear he was in the first two rounds. And with Peter Devos going for Belgium, it's going to be a big ass now. Comes round and he's already cranking up the speed as he comes to the first obstacle, which was obstacle number two in the first round, and he's had that down. Oh, bitterly disappointing. Just never took off, and so it really has opened the door now for Peter Devos because he knows exactly what he's got to do. And so for uh, Paul O'Shea, he's just got to get round and make sure that he's still reasonably quick. He, and in the first two rounds, Scarlett's going to match a pitch who never looked like hitting a fence. And just there. Uh, stays intact coming now to the double which was part of the trouble jumps that well now he's galloping round to the final fence which is number which is a fence that wasn't included first time round. so 46.97 in the uh, fur with four faults so it really has opened the door for peter devos on a part he now can really take it not easily by any stretch. There is this balancing act between throwing caution to the wind, but clearly this is such a good horse apart, and Peter Devos so experienced, you know exactly what he has to do. Just having a look at a fence that wasn't jumped in the uh, first round, just to make the horse familiar. And that fence number two, well, the first fence in this jump off, I don't think came down at any stage in the main competition until just then in the jump off. So, Peter Davos. So, a little disappointing. The Irish team, I could see the all watching from the side, and when that fence went down, there was a look a bit of disappointment. And they presumably, from their perspective, know they need Peter Devils to have a something go wrong. Well, he hasn't gone wrong there. And now he moves around to what was the third first time round, at the fourth first time round. Jumps that one well. Comes back to the fence that has been included in this jump off. Easy enough down to this upright at nine rattles it but it stays intact and this is just a knows he doesn't have to go flat out so plenty of time if he stays clear oh gives that one such a rattle but somehow that pole stayed intact as he comes round to the final fence well he's slower uh, but he's going up he rode his luck on a couple of times in that jump off, particularly the first part of the double, but it's win again in Poland for the Belgians and Peter Devos. The Nations Cup champions have won this Longines FEI Nations Cup here in Poland in a jump off against Ireland. And he knows, I think, he was a little lucky on a part particularly here watch as that rail gets a real clattering but somehow does not come out and land on the ground margins between success and failure it was a slower time but belgium have got the honors here belgium 
Ireland, France, Germany, Netherlands, Brazil, Poland, Austria. That is the order. Belgium coming out on top. For Paul O'Shea, it was that first fence blunder in the jump off, although he was quicker. It was, in the end, Peter Devos didn't have to go flat out and so was able to jump clear, but not without the odd moment of anxiety for his teammates and the Belgian supporters in the crowd here in Sopot. But it is a win for Belgium and thoroughly deserved. Great performance, particularly in the second round when they had three clear rounds. Niels Brunsils, Gudrun Petit with a double clear, and Peter Devos also with a double clear, and he backed it up with a clear round in the jump off. Wonderful day for the Belgians, whose continued success story in the Nations Cup continues. So, now we'll get ready for the presentation. And the part of the ring being prepared, but the crowd on hand to celebrate the success of the Belgians here in Poland. And we'll be back to bring you that presentation ceremony in due course. And let's just confirm the standings after the third leg of seven here in Europe Division One. France out on top on 260. Belgium with victory here now sitting second on 190. Uh, taking, over from <coughs> taking over from Switzerland, who weren't here in Sopot, 180. Another solid performance from the Irish, just missing out on success. Sit in fourth on 160. Germany, 125. Great Britain. Uh, they're the next in the standing. So, uh, wonderful performance from Belgium here in Sopot. And uh, gets their fine season off to uh, a good start with Belgium. Now, next support a call for them after a second and a win. They'll be in Gestern next week, and then they'll be at Hickstead. And clearly, they are wherever they turn up now are the team to try and beat if you beat them then you may have a chance of actually winning whatever leg you are in currently the, the strength of their performances of late so belgium going along very nicely at the moment the arena being readied Ladies and gentlemen, now you have time to come back to your seats. 
ceremony here in Sopot after a thrilling Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup competition and the victorious Belgian team coming in to the arena and what a fabulous job they have done today with their team of Niels Prinsiels, Gudrun Petty, Yves van der Hasselt and Peter Devos, the star of the show, as they come into the arena in front of the crowd 
winning that jump off. Accompanied by Peter Weinberger, the chef to keep. Man in the middle there. And there is Gudrun. What a fine second round she had going, and indeed first round. One of the combinations to go double clear here. And next up, as they come into the arena, following them in is the Irish team, led by their chef to keep Rodrigo de Pesea. Pesea. And their team of Paul O'Shea, Shane Sweeten, and Peter Maloney, and Bertram Allen. Bertram Allen didn't even need have to jump in that second round after three clear rounds. And then the French in third, reduced to a team of just three in that second round but so close to securing a place in the jump-off until Alexis Derube had that final fence down after clear rounds from Olivia Robert and Roger Yves Boss. Olivia Robert going double clear. Thierry Pommel, their chef to keep, but have every chance, and then that final fence down for providing real late drama. There are the Belgians lining up for this presentation here in the arena here at Sopot. The first three teams coming out. The Irish team, but the Belgian team of Niels Brugsseels, Gudrun Petit, Yves van der Hasselt and Peter Devos. What a great moment for them, another victory. They're getting pretty used to it. The Longines watch quota is mounting all the time. And the presentation party getting ready, including uh, Longines president here, Mr. Walter von Cannell. Representative of the FEI is Alfred Boll. And representing here the show director, uh, Agata. Jaziska and the president of the Hippodrome Sopot is Kaja Kotiaraska Variepchik. And the photographers all in position. And the riders will dismount, accompanied with the grooms holding their horses. And coming on to the rostrum here, the winning podium, the Belgians. Gudrun Petit looking, smiling broadly. A huge part she's played in today's victory, along with Yves van der Hassop. Sadly for him, he was a two-discard score. It's not as if he did badly, because he only had a fence down in each case. Uh, Peter Devos and Niels Brunsils, the other two, to prove the stars of the show. Step forward, then, the uh, presentation party including the mayor of Sopot here, Jacek Kanowski, and the president of the Polish Equestrian Federation, Jan Solciciak. And now the watch is being presented to the victorious team, Team Belgium. What a year and a few years it's been for their team. Smiling away. That is Belgium, the winning team, smiling away here. What a the jump off, well, it didn't quite have the drama following Paul O'Shea knocking that first fence down in the jump off. It took the slight drama out of it, but all the same, up until then, it had been a thrilling competition. But still, Peter Devos had to work hard. He, he, certainly would have had the odd heart in Mars moment, particularly at the part of the double, which he rattled strongly. And now, time for the national anthem.
where the Belgian national anthem rings around the Sopot Arena for the second year running. And uh, a great performance from the team with getting receiving the trophy. Bouquets of flowers being presented to the winning riders. for the second place team and that is Ireland losing out in a jump off but they can still be pretty pleased as we watch the smiling Belgian team enjoying and high-fiving all around good effort Thank you. 
Belgian team uh, go round the arena here and a wonderful performance from a team that uh, showed just why they're such a force to be reckoned with in this FEI Jumping Nations Cup. Gudrun Petit smiling with Peter Devos, Yves van der Hasselt and Yves Seals, the stars of the show here. And then in second, the Irish team very creditable performance from Paul O'Shea, Shane Sweet and Peter Maloney and Bertram Allen. He didn't have to jump in the jump off, but in the third round. But the jump off, Paul O'Shea knocking down that first fence in the jump off. Opened the door for Belgium to enjoy another memorable Nations Cup day. And particularly for Gudrun Petit, so pleased to be part of the team, enjoying the success. Smiles all around for the Irish. Well, they didn't want to just be making up the numbers. Well, they didn't, but I'm sure still feel like a job well done. But knowing just how good the standard is, still with three clear rounds in the uh, final second round, still not good enough. The French tried hard despite being reduced to three men after Olivier uh, uh, Simon de Lest withdrew. So the three remaining riders delivered the goods. But it's Belgium who take the honours here. And uh, next week, the roadshow heads off to Holland and Geesteren, which will be a chance for the Netherlands to, well, after a good start here, to add some further points. So next week, it's Geesteren. That's where the FEI Nations Cup roadshow moves to next week. Well, if it's half as good as this, then those fans will be in for a treat. It's been wonderfully tense, stuff, high-class competition here in Poland. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage. We'll be back next week uh, in Holland to enjoy round four of seven of the FEI Nations Cup Series in Europe.